Panama's promise to us has been broken. And above all, China is operating the Panama Canal, and we didn't give it to China. We gave it to Panama, and we're taking it back. Panama is forcing authorities to substantially scale back shipping through the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal, a symbol of engineering marvel and global trade dominance, is now facing an existential crisis. Water levels are dropping, forcing ships into lengthy delays and sending shipping costs soaring. The impact is rippling through economies worldwide. But while Panama struggles to keep its vital waterway running, other nations are seizing the moment. With billions of dollars at stake, they're launching ambitious projects to challenge the canal's supremacy. Will one of these new trade routes rise to replace it, or will the canal defy the odds and reclaim its throne? The battle for the future of global shipping has begun. So stick around until the end. The Panama Canal has been a game-changer in global trade since its opening in 1914. By linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, it cut travel times drastically, eliminating the need for ships to navigate the treacherous waters around South America's southern tip. Before the canal, vessels traveling between Europe and California faced a grueling, months-long journey, battling unpredictable seas and extreme weather. The alternative, the Northwest Passage, was mostly impassable, blocked by thick ice for most of the year. A faster, safer route was desperately needed. In the early 1900s, the United States took on the challenge of constructing a canal through Central America, a project that would shorten voyages by nearly 12,000 kilometers. The undertaking was nothing short of monumental. Workers blasted through rock, excavated millions of cubic meters of earth, and built a system of locks to lift and lower ships across the canal's uneven terrain. But progress came at a devastating cost. Thousands of laborers lost their lives due to disease, accidents, and brutal working conditions. After years of grueling effort and a staggering $375 million price tag, the canal finally opened in August 1914. That first year alone, nearly 1,000 ships passed through, proving the canal's immediate and lasting importance. But more than a century later, the canal is facing a crisis that threatens its future. The key issue, water, or rather, the lack of it. The Panama Canal depends on vast amounts of fresh water to operate its locks, but Gatun Lake, its primary water source, has reached its lowest level in six decades. Prolonged droughts, made worse by climate change, are putting immense pressure on the system. The consequences are already visible. The number of ships allowed through daily has been cut significantly, from nearly 38 to just 24. Larger vessels must lighten their loads, and freight costs on some routes have surged by as much as 400%. If this trend continues, the canal's ability to function will be in serious jeopardy, but the crisis extends beyond water shortages. Ships today are larger and more numerous than ever before, pushing the limits of what the canal can handle. Some nations and corporations aren't willing to wait for a solution. They're already looking for alternatives. New trade routes are emerging across the Americas, each aiming to ease global shipping congestion. But can any of them truly rival the Panama Canal? Let's take a closer look. One of the most advanced alternatives is Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor, a 308-kilometer railway designed to link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Instead of vessels passing directly between the two coasts, cargo is unloaded at the Gulf port of Coatzacoalcos, transported across the Isthmus of Tehuantepec by train, and reloaded onto ships at Salina Cruz on the Pacific side. This method eliminates the need for ships to navigate Panama's increasingly unreliable waterway, offering a quicker alternative when delays at the canal mount. But this isn't just a rail line, it's an entire logistics overhaul. Both ports are being modernized to handle the increased traffic 
and the Mexican government is investing $7.5 billion to bring this vision to life. By 2033, the corridor is expected to process 1.4 million TEUs annually, a fraction of the Panama Canal's capacity, but still a significant figure. However, this system isn't a direct replacement. It relies on smooth transfers between ships and trains, which can introduce delays of its own. Still, with Line Z already in operation and showing promising results, Mexico might be pulling ahead in the race. Colombia, on the other hand, has a different approach. While not intended as a direct competitor, its proposed rail corridor would create a 240-kilometer connection between the Atlantic and Pacific, linking ports such as Cupica, Jurado, and Acandí. With an estimated price tag of $7 to $13 billion, this railway is still in the feasibility stage, but is part of a larger national push to restore over 1,800 kilometers of rail infrastructure. Yet, the challenges are immense. The planned route cuts through ecologically sensitive areas, raising concerns among environmentalists and local communities. Financial viability is another hurdle, as critics argue that modernizing existing rail lines might be a smarter investment. Still, early studies suggest the project is technically achievable. The question is, can it overcome these obstacles and establish itself as a viable trade corridor? But Nicaragua's mega canal is perhaps the boldest and most controversial proposal to challenge the Panama Canal's dominance. The plan envisions a 278-kilometer waterway stretching from Bluefields on the Caribbean coast to Puerto Corinto on the Pacific. If completed, it would be more than three times the length of the Panama Canal and capable of handling some of the world's largest ships. But is this an engineering marvel in the making or just an ambitious dream? The numbers behind this project are staggering. With an estimated cost of around $64 billion, it would be the most expensive canal project in history. Its locks, designed to be 510 meters long, 77 meters wide, and 27 meters deep, would dwarf those of the Panama Canal. The idea was to create a passage capable of accommodating massive container ships and bulk carriers that are too large for Panama's locks. On paper, it looks like a game changer for global shipping. But turning this vision into reality is a different story. Funding remains the project's biggest obstacle. Originally, the Chinese-backed company HKND was leading the effort, but after facing financial difficulties and mounting skepticism, it abandoned the project. Since then, no major investors have stepped in to fill the gap. Without solid financial backing, the mega canal remains little more than a concept on paper. Beyond financial concerns, environmental challenges loom large. The proposed canal route cuts through some of Central America's most fragile ecosystems, including Lake Nicaragua, the region's largest freshwater lake. Scientists and environmentalists warn that construction could devastate local biodiversity, disrupt fragile ecosystems, and even threaten water supplies for thousands of people. Adding to the controversy, tens of thousands of residents could be displaced, raising serious questions about land rights, compensation, and social impact. Despite all these hurdles, the Nicaraguan government hasn't given up. A revised route has been proposed, but experts remain skeptical. The financial, environmental, and logistical challenges are still unresolved, making the project's future uncertain. If completed, the mega canal could revolutionize global shipping, offering a new path for the world's largest vessels. But with so many obstacles standing in the way, it remains to be seen if this grand vision will ever take shape. Could Nicaragua be the underdog watching from the sidelines, full of potential but unable to enter the race? However, the Panama Canal Authority isn't backing down. Determined to keep this vital waterway competitive, 
they're rolling out both immediate adjustments and long-term solutions to tackle the growing challenges. One of their biggest bets is the Indio River Dam, a $1.6 billion project aimed at securing water reserves. Once completed, expected between 2030 and 2031, it will help maintain at least 36 ship transits per day, even in drought conditions. Right now, efforts are focused on relocating affected communities and addressing land rights concerns. Financially, the canal remains strong. In 2024, it generated nearly $5 billion in revenue, with profits climbing 8%. But will these changes be enough to keep the Panama Canal ahead? Or is a new competitor poised to take its place? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.